great idea, and it's definitely something that I feel like VR would benefit from, is having this sort of like fast-paced, frantic minigame that you can play with, with a gathering. I'm joined by Patrick Ryan of Fancy Bear Games, and we're going to be talking about his game, which is uh, coming out very shortly, uh, Schlocks. So Correct. thank you for joining us today, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, to kind of get things rolling, for people that aren't aware, why don't you give us a pitch in your own words for Schlocks? All right. Uh, for the short version, Schlocks is a VR party game based on you know playing a set of mini games before you hand off the Vive headset to you know the next person that you're you're together with, trying to compete for you know the highest score you can. Cool. Um... When I first kind of found out about this game, uh, I was a little bit struck. But, uh, the idea of a really fast-paced party game wasn't something that I would originally uh, associate with VR, necessarily. Um, it's something I'm more kind of think of, like, exploratory. Um, so I'm wondering where the idea of the game came from and where why you chose to go the, the VR route with it. Uh, well, uh, you know, we definitely took a lot of inspiration from, you know, the WarioWare series and, you know, those frantic minigames, that feeling of, of having to figure out what task you have to complete really quickly. And we wanted to we wanted to introduce that to the Vive. I was looking to start VR development myself, um, and it was something that was pitched in the office that I work at here at Game Assembly. And I was like, that is a, a great idea, and it's definitely something that I feel like VR would benefit from, is having this sort of like fast-paced, frantic minigame that you can play with, with a gathering. Sure. Um, and what kind of challenges came up in, in development of Schlocks, specifically with this idea of having a lot of different people all kind of competing and all kind of swapping the vibe around, that kind of thing? Uh, it was definitely, uh, you know, definitely a lot of balance of who has a headset and when. And we didn't want to make it frantic where you had to pass the Vive headset off really quickly. It's an expensive piece of equipment, so we wanted to make sure that there was a moment of pause where it's really frantic when you're playing, but then your time comes to an end and you don't have to immediately just like take the headset off and throw it to someone else. Right. You know, there, there's a moment where you can like, all right, you know, I can see I can see how I did and then I can take the headset off at my convenience and then pass it to, you know, whoever and then they have the chance to, you know, step in and, and get ready before they start going again. Yeah, it's expensive piece of uh, equipment to be just chucking to, yeah. to your partner. So we, we want to make sure that there is no five incidents, hopefully, because there's no benefit of, of passing it off quickly to, to the next person. You know, that's, you can take as much time as you want. Cool. Um, you're the first developer we've specifically talked to about developing in virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if you could kind of, kind of at a, a, a bird's eye view, kind of talk about um, some of the things you found uh, were helpful in working in VR, some of the things you found that were unexpected challenges, um, yeah. and kind of the general uh, path forward you see for that that medium. Yeah, um, this was you know my first project in VR. Uh, well, it was my first big project. I, I previously had a Gear VR, uh, which was the you know smaller Oculus uh, phone version, the mobile VR as they have. And I didn't really develop too much for that. I developed one small project, but this was really my first big step. So I definitely went through a lot of learning to get caught up to to where the VR development is now. And the biggest difference between you know, traditional development of console or PC is your controller is you know the person, and you have to expect that when they reach out their arms, that's going to do something in the game, because they have complete control over their own arms and their own head inside virtual reality. So you have to take account for that. So if you try to hide something behind a wall they can just stick their head through the wall and, you know, see what's on the other side. Um, so you have to be really aware of where their body is because they are the controller for your environments. So that was the biggest challenge of, of thinking about games and being like, this is something where the player has to pick up and then put here. And how could they kind of cheat their way around this by, you know, moving their hands in certain directions or trying to put their head somewhere else or, or things along those lines because their body is the controller. Mm, cool. Um, last thing I kind of wanted to pick your brain about with Schlocks is where you've got this kind of uh, frantic, in some ways, short mini games. Um, you've gone for a kind of like 1950s department story kind of aesthetic um, and kind of uh, vibe to the the entire game. Um, I'm wondering what brought you in that direction. Um, WarriorWare and like games like that have gone for really like surrealist, just completely out there. Um, and I think it works brilliantly, but I, I wondered if there was a story behind going that direction. 
Uh, well, it, it didn't start out that way. That came about when we were trying to find a direction to go with, with the looks, and one of the suggestions was, you know, back when these large department stores, I was trying to think of why you would play a lot of small games. And, you know, the, the term schlocks means cheap wares. Mm. And so when I think of cheap wares... I think of, you know, a big department store. You know, those really, when they started to boom in, like, large department stores and these mega stores, and quick, we have all these goods. Um, usually there was a lot of low-quality stuff in there and things that you would only use for a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so I, I was thinking of just old department stores. Is that how, that's how I felt it. Uh, a lot of the inspiration came from the, the old department store theme songs it's not really theme songs but that that music that used to play like you know in the background of commercials and you know buy it now commercials as well as like department stores and looking for a place that would that would fit with a bunch of small stuff mm. rather than oh you know, here's this big long you know experience here's a bunch of small experiences where would that fit into to an aesthetic makes a lot of sense um so moving from talking about schlock specifically to learning a little bit more about you, what got you involved in independent game design? Uh, yeah, I graduated from Southern University, which is a local college up here in New Hampshire, right in Hooks in New Hampshire. They have a, they have game, a game development specific degree, so I graduated out of there in 2014. Uh, sorry, 2015. I graduated there in 2015, uh, and I I got a job working in web development right out of school. And while it was good and enjoyable, I really, you know, felt the drive to get back into the game industry. And so as soon as I got the opportunity to work on something on my own, I, I definitely jumped on the chance and got back into the game industry, because that's really what my passion is, is, is being creative and, and creating games. So I was working a, you know, a web dev job, and then I got back into the game industry when I, when, just when I had the opportunity to. Cool. Um, what are some of the games that have been inspirational uh, for you, both kind of like in general as, you, as you're... Uh, background as a developer and also for specifically shocks you mentioned warrior which is very obvious but uh what other what other games have have been there uh for for me personally as a game developer the uh, the two most important series that i always think about is the the original halo series uh halo 1 2 and 3 as well as the biosoc franchise um though both of those games were something that really drove me to a point where i wanted to be uh, in the industry uh, more so on the Halo side because I I find video games is a very social experience hmm. and that's why this game of Schlocks is you know a VR social experience because gaming to me is something to bring people together and that's what I remember you know the early days of Halo One Two and Three of just getting together with friends and playing multiplayer and you know being being with people and playing games is something that's very important to me so the Halo series is what I resonate most with uh, as well as I just uh, Bioshock was the first kind of story-driven game that really, really sucked me in for, mm. for telling a story and telling a narrative and having that, that visual aesthetic that ties everything together. Um, but for specifically Schlocks, uh, the Warrior series is definitely something that we put a lot of uh, interest from, uh, that quick, frantic multiplayer game, as well as... Um, I'm trying to think if we have any other, any other specifics. Um, not necessarily games, because uh, a lot of the individual activities are just... I guess we're playing a lot of um, a lot of um, inspiration from things outside of games because I'm kind of mimicking a lot of things that you do in real life. Mm. So you know, regular sports such as soccer or basketball, or you know, cornhole or um, just things outside of the video game realm. That is where I'm drawing a lot of the inspiration from. Sure. Schlocks because you know it's quick, frantic, uh, and it's Things that you might not be doing regularly outside of VR or in VR either. <laughs> cool. And to uh, kind of bring this to a close, uh, are there any other indie dev teams or games out there that have particularly caught your attention uh, of late? I know that it's a, a crowded field these days, but um, any that are sticking out to you? Um, there's a game that I follow religiously on their dev blog. Uh, the game's called Wobble Dogs at the moment. Um, it's a game about uh, essentially raising these small animals that it looks like dogs. They're you know they're four-legged, and you interact with them, and they have emotions, and they can grab onto things and eat stuff. And uh, it's just really interesting to see that the development process go through through that one. Um, 
and I, I follow their their devlog on TigSource, um, which is uh, really interesting to see their stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of any other indie games at the top of my head. Um, um, that's really the only indie games that I that I follow like actively. Mm. Um, there's definitely a, a lot of other interesting stuff out there, but Bobble Docs is definitely something that I really enjoy watching them develop their 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 product there. Cool, awesome. Well, Patrick Ryan, thank you for sharing a little bit about the background of Schlocks and of yourself. Uh, Schlocks will be out on Steam early access on the 18th. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you.